Well, right now on Weather Underground, a stormy start to the week with the threat of severe weather ramping up. Find out if you are watching another hour of Weather Underground. I'm Alex Wilson. Hey, everyone. I'm Mike Bettis. Glad you could join us. Plenty to talk about, including, we haven't talked about in a while, severe weather. Yeah, you know, it's that time of year where we oftentimes see another peak when it comes to severe risk and severe effects. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, right now, we've got active strong storms moving through, especially parts of the Southern Plains. And we have this as well. We haven't talked about Torcons in a while either. Torcon of three that's going to be in Texas. Heads up for places like College Station or Austin, San Antonio, Houston. And for some of you, that happens after dark tonight. Yeah, it seems like we've only been talking about Torcons in relation to tropical systems. Now mm -hmm. we've got a very potent system, strong cold right. front moving through, and this is bringing us some very active weather. And it won't stop today. Some of you will have that risk tomorrow as yep. well. We're going to have that forecast coming up for you here in just a second. Let's start, though, in Dallas. We've had a very strong line that's come through Dallas today. That line now pushing yeah. east of the Metroplex, thank goodness. But watch for some high gusty winds today and brief tornado touchdowns within some of these squall lines. Yeah, this time, as Mike pointed out, anything that's not you know, tied down and easily lofted would be lofted at this point. As we go into the afternoon, we've got that big dip in the jet stream. So uh, that low pressure moving in. Oh my goodness, like Dallas, lights out on my graphics. There we go. Uh, moisture being pulled in out of the Gulf of Mexico. That cold front coming in and again behind that temperatures will be significantly cooler than they've been uh, thus far. So we're starting out warmer and then cooling off for many locations. As that moisture moves in out ahead of that cold front, we've got the lift, the moisture, and so severe weather has already developed. And these thunderstorms continue to rock and roll off towards the east parts of Oklahoma and Texas in the mix right now with strong upper level winds spreading east that could fuel that significant damaging wind threat. That's going to continue to allow that line of storms to propagate eastward. And again, we could get some of those strong gusty winds down to the surface. The Dallas area, again, right now, you've got the strongest storms, the gustiest of winds moving through the metro area right now. Also up towards Tulsa, you're getting blasted by some strong winds. And we've got a severe thunderstorm warning up in the Tulsa metro. But let's start in Dallas, again, with this line of storms rolling through. So away from the airport at this point and on the east side of I 35E, I 45, you're in the mix right now. And these storms will be working along I-20 here as we continue through the next few hours. So obviously travel not going to be ideal, particularly on one of those roadways that runs, you know, uh, parallel to this because that blast of wind perpendicular to the roadway could especially give those high profile vehicles a little bit of trouble. And we can still see problems on I-20, even though you may be moving just towards or along with those strongest of winds. Winds on the roads, not an easy go. And obviously it has been uh, slowing down some operations there at Dallas, Fort Worth, but the storms will be moving off towards the east. Here, Rogers, Tulsa, and Wagoner counties under a severe thunderstorm warning. Tornado possible tag on this one with, again, gusty winds, the most likely danger here. Having a little trouble getting the radar up, but just know it is on the north side of the Tulsa area as well. These storms will continue to move off towards the east, heading towards western Arkansas shortly. So within the next few hours, western Arkansas, things turning more active for you. Right now, you've got some light rain there. As we showed you, the best chance chance of severe weather today is going to be focused into parts of Texas, but also Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, certainly in play. The Shreveport area also in that tornado threat zone. A Torcon of two there, Torcon of three for Lufkin, for College Station, and for Houston. Again, not an overwhelming risk of tornadoes, but Mike, certainly an isolated tornado possible with damaging winds, the prime threat. Yeah, development across some of these areas. So we look at Mississippi, we look at Alabama, Tennessee for thunderstorms during the day tomorrow. Starting tomorrow morning, that cold front is quickly moving east. And with that southerly flow, again, coming out of the Gulf of Mexico, we've got more moisture on the increase across parts of the Mid-South, the Deep South, and that will help to fuel those thunderstorm chances continue. Thunderstorms in progress early. Mike showed you what's going to be happening in Shreveport at midnight, so those storms don't just turn off. We'll keep those going into the morning hours. So starting off the day along the Mississippi River, places like uh, Memphis could be getting in on some thunderstorms. Down into western Mississippi, extreme eastern Arkansas and northeast Louisiana. Again, our strong winds aloft push this system off towards the east. We begin to see more of that negative tilt. So again, a lot of energy with this system. An energetic system could fuel some strong and significant 
significant storms once again tomorrow with that damaging wind threat increasing through the day, especially as we get some of that daytime heating going. That could help to allow those thunderstorms not just to continue, but to also intensify. So tomorrow afternoon, we look at places like Nashville down to Tupelo, Mississippi, uh, portions of Alabama as well. So Birmingham down to Montgomery through the afternoon hours and then eventually working into the state of Georgia. So I think Tupelo, Greenville, Jackson, you guys will be earlier in the day, probably up to about early afternoon. And then later in the day, we look at Birmingham, we look at Montgomery, we look at Huntsville, Nashville and Chattanooga, even Atlanta in play. You guys will be a little bit later. So Chattanooga to Atlanta, it'll be later on into the evening hours. But Torcon values stay in that two to three range tomorrow. So again, isolated risk of a tornado across sections of our southern states. Future radar looks like this. Again, tomorrow morning, we'll be looking at Mississippi. I think into the early afternoon, we watch a place like Tupelo. So 12, 1 o'clock, your lunch break could be a stormy one. Then the afternoon hours more towards our late day commute. That's when things really get going around Birmingham, uh, Nashville, and then Chattanooga for dinner time. Atlanta will be a little bit later for you. And again, eastern parts of Tennessee, including the Knoxville area, could see some stronger storms into the evening, Mike. Absolutely. You know, some necessary rain coming to portions of New England as well. Not necessarily the most beautiful day here in Worcester, campus of Holy Cross, but welcome rain showers. I know Monday is always a kind of a rough day. You're already, you know, having a tough time getting your energy up. But early in the week, rain, you're like, oh, I just need a nap. Right now, we've got the rain falling from Hartford up towards the Pittsfield area. Again, Worcester getting in on some rain. We've seen some passing showers uh, farther to the east around the Boston metro area and up into sections of southern Vermont, southern New Hampshire. We've got some rain showers there as well. Right now, though, some of the steadiest, heaviest rain is focused over parts of Long Island and Connecticut. But this is rolling off towards the east. So again, a soggy start to your week uh, for the afternoon. And it's coming to places like Boston. I think, unfortunately for you, it will be the afternoon drive that brings the best chance of rain around Boston. And you can see at least some rain showers into the Portland area as well. So a little tropical moisture in play coming in off the Atlantic. We've got an invest area as well. That'll help keep things a bit unsettled here across the region into the day tomorrow as well. So watching for waves of rain showers, especially closer to the coast. Now, New York City, morning showers out there on Tuesday. Tuesday highs, though, closing in on 70 degrees. And same with Wednesday. We'll keep it in the upper 60s. And once again, watching for morning showers. Not necessarily the best news for your morning drive, but if you've got afternoon plans, I think a little less of a chance later in the day. Here's a look at the future radar, and you can see the rain showers overspread the area during the morning hours on Wednesday. And you can see we've got some showers back off into western New York and PA as well. Once again, watching for a little influence off the Atlantic. Rainfall to come, Mike. Most areas will keep this at an inch or less. And the temperature swings also continue the ups and the downs of the fall season, right? Today, 138 million people above average. You can certainly see where that front is tomorrow as it continues to slide off towards the east. We still have plenty of warmth and now getting into some of the big metros into the Midwest and the Northeast. So 141 million above average, but that front continues to slide off towards the east. So less folks in, say, the Mid-South and the Plains are feeling the warmth. That colder air is beginning to filter in across sections of the Inner Mountain West all the way into the Southwest. And as that cold front moves east through the early to mid part of the week, we'll see those temperatures tumbling uh, farther to the east. But out ahead of it, that surge of southerly wind offering up the moisture and the warmth. So 10 to 20 degrees above average for high temperatures into places like Detroit and Saginaw, into western New York, Rochester to Buffalo, and even northwest Pennsylvania. I think places like uh, Bradford and Erie and uh, Cleveland, Ohio will be on the warm side. Now today's highs, how about 83 in Jackson, 77 Atlanta, 75 for Roanoke, 77 Columbus, even 78 in St. Louis. Still on the cool side in New York at 61, but you guys warm up into the middle part of the week, 10 to 20 degrees above average, particularly across northern sections of New England, whereas we're below average in the wake of that front farther to the west and southwest. Forecast highs on Wednesday. Boy, how things change. Columbus topping out in the upper 50s, Chicago mid 50s, St. Louis 64, 69 for Atlanta. Still warm farther to the east. Wilmington, you'll hold on to the 80s on Wednesday. Your change is coming on Thursday.
And so that leads us to today. Still talking tropics, of course, heading into the late part of October. We've got a new invest into the Atlantic. So we're going to be watching that. And of course, our cold front sliding east. Let's talk, though, about invest now 94L. That's uh, one of the areas that we're going to really be watching here as we finish off the week. Not likely to make landfall if we become a tropical system, more likely to be a subtropical. But what this will also help to do is pump in a little bit more moisture here across the east. So uh, enhancing our rain threat into parts of those generally parched northeastern areas. Also an area to watch on the south side of Invest 94L. That's the one to the north. So this is currently southeast of Bermuda. 35 mile per hour winds pressure of 1014 millibars. It's moving to the west at 24 miles an hour and it will continue to move west. So you're thinking all right that's going to move towards Bermuda and then closer to the U.S. coast and it will eventually skirts out as that cold front and that low move farther to the east. But our five day development area does keep Keep this on a west northwesterly track. Again, likely to become a subtropical system if it develops into uh, something that would uh, be designated trop uh, tropical versus subtropical. So as Dr. Nav talks about those hybrid systems, still a little bit uh, of, a, of a hybrid thing going on. Then we've got our area to watch off towards the south, 20% chance development with this. Again, this is close to the Bahamas. We're looking close to home now as we get towards the beginning and the end part of the season. It's close to home that we oftentimes keep an eye on five day development area to the north uh, northwest of where it currently is. But again, our invest, our area to watch, helping to increase the moisture across sections of the north. Gra gas prices to groceries, you're seeing inflation everywhere, right? And drought conditions in parts of the south not helping. Low water levels on the Mississippi River keeping cargo barges at a standstill. Our national correspondent Justin Michaels visited some of the hardest hit areas, joins us now. Justin, that economic impact is going to stretch really coast to coast, so it's not limited to the river. No, you think the Mississippi River is for almost everything that we ship domestically and internationally. And in fact, the economist we spoke yeah, one thing uh, that stands out in that piece is just how huge those barges are. You know, you kind of don't yeah. realize looking from it, far away. It, because this, and Mike, is the fact that one barge is equal to 70 semi-trucks full of goods no or kidding. 16 car, you know, cars uh, on a train. If you multiply that by a barge uh, rail cars, amazing how much goes through that river. Thanks, Justin, for Thanks. sharing the story. Be right back events and it's usually early in the season. Right now we've got that snow coming down across sections of Montana into parts of Colorado and Utah and Wyoming. You've got snow showers. Also plenty of reports coming in across sections of Nevada. Look at these snowfall totals. Georgetown in Montana, 22 inches of snow. So no slouch for this event. Alta picking up 20 inches. Bozeman almost 16 inches. Helena, 13 inches of snow and Summit Park, Utah right at 10 inches. Now that snow will continue to fall as we go through this afternoon and evening. So across Idaho, western Montana, western Wyoming, that's where you can anticipate the best chances of snow. So Jackson Hole, you're picking up a little bit more snow at the resort. Rain from Seattle down towards Portland. And then another wave of snow overspreading the area into the day on Wednesday. So more snow headed your way in Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming, Mike.